Chama for very nicely, comprehensively you covered the entire uh, risk assessment in Himachal. Uh, may I now request uh, Sri Tikender Singh, Deputy Mayor of Shimla, to talk about risk at last, a user's perspective. Thank you, Chair. And please remind me of my time also, because, yeah, yeah maybe two minutes before I have to end. And uh, uh, my dear worthy friends, uh, it gives me immense pleasure to be here uh, uh, today, uh, this afternoon. After, though after a sumptuous lunch, it's very difficult to have uh, a nice uh, uh, audience as well. Uh, but before I speak about, I think uh, what I intend to do is uh, about how uh, the, the disaster understands the assessment. I mean, <laughs> my narrative to disaster is that I'm not a disaster, by the way, but how the disaster understands your assessment. I mean, the assessment that we make about all the data that we collect, and when actually the disaster takes place, what happens to the data? What happens to our intervention? So, so from purely a, uh, a theory of praxis that I call, I mean, how, how practically and who actually owns this data, whether this data is, uh, uh, I, I mean, it catches the imagination of the people who actually are affected, so I'll just try to cover all that. But please, before I just jump uh, to uh, the, the creation of this atlas in Shimla and the huge and phenomenal data that we have created through various agencies, uh, some of whom are present here as well, Please just allow me, please, Kamal, just uh, excuse me again, I'll be quoting some of the foreign uh, people who have collected this data. And why it is so important for us now? I mean, though, though the, the gist and uh, it has come up even in the morning, but still I think it is so important to again uh, reiterate what was said in the morning. And I would quote from, the, uh, from one of the important uh, documents called the Anatomy of a Silent Crisis. Uh, I hope uh, many of you have read, uh, it's a phenomenal work done by our climate change experts. And uh, uh, it's, it's been brought out by the Humanitarian Forum. And why I also caught, call it as a question of justice. Justice for all of us living in South Asia, in the, in, in the developing world. Because it, it states that the changes that is affecting our food, health, poverty, water, human displacement, security, etc. Apparently, the worst affected are the world's poorest groups and who cannot be held responsible for the problem. That's a very hard fact. And, and the findings indicate that 300,000 people die every year because of it. Now, the economic losses of $125 billion, I, I, I presume all of, us, all of you know about that, and 4 billion are vulnerable and 500 million are at extreme risk, but that is not the all. A grave question of justice. Why it is a grave question of justice? For the simple reason that the developing countries bear over nine-tenth of the climate change burdens. So this is from the, the humanitarian forum. And 98% of seriously affected come from the developing world. Now we can understand the catastrophe is everywhere. And we are not to be blamed for the kind of climate change things that are happening. Maybe I'll come to a little a little later. And 99% of all the deaths that takes place because from weather and related disasters uh, are there. And 90% of total income losses takes place in these developing countries. Now, interestingly, 50 least developed countries contribute less than 1% of global carbon emissions. Now, climate change is already facing 50 million additional people to go hungry and driving 10 million additional people to extreme poverty. We, we know this hard data. We know the statistics. But the point is, and this is, uh, this is uh, I'm very close to my heart, and this brings me to one of the phrases that I always remember when I was a student, and uh, a student of literature, and when we used to, uh, when you used to read this play called The Hamlet by Shakespeare. And if you all remember in Hamlet, there, they, uh, I mean, I mean uh, they're, they're the, the prince speaks about to be or not to be, to be or not to be. And he speaks about a unity in an ethereal world. Now, to be, which means if, even if you do not succeed now, so there will be some ethereal world where, we'll, where, where, we'll, where you will succeed. But as far as climate change is concerned, as far as the disasters are concerned, there is no second world. This is the real world. And I think it is this scientific aptitude, this scientific, the data also came in, uh, in the first presentation, that there is no question of not to be. The question is to be. 
And the point is how that has to happen to be, and what Anand was also very explicitly mentioning, how we can avert, and what is my fear, what really jitters me, and what really provokes me to speak here also is, that the, 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 the phenomenal data that comes before us, it speaks about that if we have to reduce, the only solution is adaptation, we all know, and of, re of reducing the risk, but it has to be scaled up by a factor not less than 100 in developing countries. Are we doing that? Are we capable to do that? And the only way to reduce that is through adaptation, but what is it that we are investing? It is just 1% of the total money that is required to mitigate this disaster, to, 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 to really challenge the kind, of, and to reduce the disaster, disaster that is in the offing. So is it, is it, uh, is it sufficient? Are we, are, we, are we discussing that? We know we, we cannot, because this is beyond, the, beyond our discussion forum, we cannot even discuss about the long-drawn strategies that our national government had about common but differential responsibility. That is no more being discussed. We don't even expect that money to flow in. So then where's the money going to come from? And if that money is not going to come from, then how is it that we're going to intervene? I think that is something, uh, something that really jitters me. And it is just by, uh, j uh, without scaling all this up, I don't think we will be able to really catch up with the kind of uh, challenges that we have. And this brings me to the kind of interventions that we are happening, uh, that is happening in our country and also in the mountain region. Why I'm so focused about the mountain region? Because I heard the Chief Secretary from Arunachal Pradesh, probably she's not here now, when she spoke about landslides. And I think in the mountain region, it is a pan-mountain kind of stuff that is going to happen. Also because in the Himalayas, we are one amongst the, mongest, uh, one amongst the youngest range of mountains that is developing. And uh, Dr. D.D. Sharma happens to be uh, the former Deputy Commissioner from Kinnor, one of the most beautiful places in India. It had all its pristine beauty, but now, uh, now no one goes to Kinnor. For the simple reason, the place that attracted the best tourists of the country, even of the world, now no one goes there because you never know whether you come back safe or not, thanks to the hydropower projects that we are constructing there. So the point is, the, the, why, we are, why we are speaking about a coherent strategy? Why we are speaking about uh, mainstreaming? Is that mainstreaming taking place? My strong and panegyric loud voice is no, that is not happening. We are, we are formulating this data. We are collating this data. But when we speak about mainstreaming, I don't think it is taking place. And please don't mind because I'm, uh, I, I'm a great critic even of myself when I don't perform well. So I won't even uh, uh, spare some of my friends who have really poured in lots of money in Himachal. For example, the World Bank, the ADB. The World Bank is investing more than 10,000 crores, but what for? World Bank is investing 10,000 crores to widen our roads in, in, in Himachal Pradesh. To widen is, what do we require in Himachal? Is it mobility of the people or mobility of the cars? Now widening these roads means more vulnerability. It means more landslides, making the state more susceptible to landslides. Similarly, ADB. Now you come to Shimla, you really enjoy it. It's so beautiful now because lots of money has been pumped in thanks to the Asian Development Bank. But what, what has happened is, now I know, I know one, of the, one, of the, one of the general answers is that look, we are not the one who are spending money. It is your state government that demands. I know that, we all know that. But the point is then where is that mainstreaming of the disaster risk reduction? Where is it taking place? Because the kind of intervention that we are making now in Simla, you come, it's, it's, it's really very beautiful. You'll find all those beautiful lamp posts, all the British look that you'll find. But at the same time, the drains that drain out water from Simla city on the mountain to the plains is now flooding. For the simple reason, the drains that we had constructed earlier, what we in Hindi call the Khadonja form, what in English is called the embankment form, where we used to restrict the flow of water so that it doesn't gush out. Now, because of this modern construction, we've constructed those drains where the water goes like a gushing stream, you can run a water mill down below and you can probably generate energy out of it. So I think that is something, if we don't do that, if we, if we, if we, if we do not intervene in that, I think it, it will be a very serious challenge. And it also leads to what Anand was saying, probably not that explicit, to the whole question of social exclusion. This we have seen happening in Kinnor. Kinnor that generates almost 8,000 megawatt of electricity, which means around 12,000 crore of rupees, and doesn't get a poultry. The, 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 the village that Dr. Didi was speaking about is a village from Kinnor. They have not just lost their habitation, but they have lost their complete economic aspect as far as 
uh, tourism is concerned, as far as the apple economy is concerned, and we know we have one of the best apples from Kinnor. So how is this data to be, re to be understood, to be comprehended, and how, it, the, when, when we speak about mainstreaming disaster risk reduction, who is to take that call? And, if, and, and let me cite another example. For example, we, uh, we are one of the best states uh, for the simple reason when, the, when, when Dr. Didi was making his presentation, we have the State Disaster Management Plan of Action. For many of you, you won't imagine, we also have the City Development Plan, uh, uh, City Disaster Management, uh, CDMA, and even the Ward Level Disaster Management Plan of Action. But the point is, who owns this data? When a disaster takes place, this struggle happens because the CDMA is not ratified by the state. So actually the implementing body happens to be the DDMA. So then there's no point in having the CDMA because the authority of the mayor or for that matter the authority of the city when a disaster takes place is hardly there. So if, and forget about the wards, but the disaster takes place there. So I think that preparedness and when we, when we build those documents also has to be very explicitly mentioned. And then this uh, also, for, why, why I'm so focused about mainstreaming because just one part won't help. For example, after the nationalization of forests in 1980s, we all know in Shimla and for that matter, in all the hilly states, my hilly partners, hilly state partners uh, uh, would substantiate that argument. We are not even able to lop a branch. What to speak about cutting a tree? 66% of the land, land mass has to be forest. It sounds good. It sounds good for the simple reason because we require forest, not just the canopy on the mountain, but also for the plains. But many of us don't know that 70% or 60% of forests have already lived their lives. These trees have to be cut down. The practice of silviculture has to be adopted. But there is, since there is no mainstreaming, every uh, winters when we have snow, almost two, 300 trees fall on the wires, and then the electricity takes almost seven to eight days to again restore electricity back to our own people. And I'm talking about a state, that state boasted of it electrifying all its villages in 1980. Imagine, that is how I think things are and that is how we have to intervene. And as far as Shimla city is concerned, we have the uh, hazard risk vulnerability assessment done by Taru. It's an excellent document, phenomenal document I would say. Then we also have the city resilience index. Very few cities speak about uh, in those terms, where, uh, the, 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 where the data was uh, collated, generated, not just from the quantitative analysis, but also from the qualitative analysis, all were merged together. And this was also uh, reproduced in uh, Quito in Habitat 3, uh, which, was, uh, which is a phenomenal document. Uh, then we have the greenhouse gas emission inventory. Then we have also the rapid visual uh, survey done by, uh, of, the, of the buildings. And one of the outcome of the, uh, of the HRVA happens to be that if a disaster takes place, like I was uh, listening to the chair, please remind me chair when my time uh, gets off, uh, when the chair was speaking about uh, landslides, mind you, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not really creating this fear, but mind you, I know how these hydropower projects have been constructed because I have led many of those unions there, of the working people. I know where the muck has been dumped. One single earthquake will not just ruin my state, but will completely, completely eradicate Punjab, Haryana, and parts of Delhi. That is what is going to happen. Now, who is to take a call on that? Phenomenal mark. Why? For the simple reason, the moment Satluj enters India from China, entire Satluj has been conveyed into the mountain, and there is no river flowing, there is no water flowing in the former river. The entire muck happens to be on the bedside of the river. What will happen? I think, I think so landslides happens to be such a major issue. And despite that, we are constructing roads, we are widening roads, and instead of moving on the mobility. So who is to take a call? Why my narrative is who, not just the national government or the state, or even myself, unless and until we discuss this paradigm of development, unless and until we, uh, uh, we really set our minds and scratch our head, because rest the, the, the disaster mitigation plan or DRR, or the, the, the state disaster management plan of actions will remain sheer paper tigers. We will be extremely good on paper, and actually we are. We speak lots of data, I mean, we are, we are phenomenally good. But on practice, we will not decide what mode of development has to be 
has to take place in, in, in our respective states or cities. I think that is something very important. And then, of course, uh, we also have to speak about the legislative issues and enforcement. And when we were doing this, uh, uh, the HRVA, mind you, we, we have a figure that speaks if, if an earthquake strikes Simla during daytime, we will have some 18,000 deaths. But if it, and that's, that's a Taru, Taru document. Can yes, you conclude, minute, yeah? Sorry? Can you conclude now? I, I will, just one minute, sir. But if it takes place during night, then there'll be 23,000 people. And the most interesting part is the High Court, the Honorable High Court did not allow its building to be mapped. Why? For the simple reason that the High Court happens to be 14 storied itself. So we can understand where exactly we are floating, where exactly we are moving. And I think it is, it is, it is this perspective that very critically we have to build about. And it is this, this perspective and this paradigm of understanding when we speak about the mainstreaming of disaster risk reduction or else it will be sheer, sheer working in silos. And I don't think this will lead us to, uh, to, to much, uh, 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 much accrued or, uh, uh, results that we uh, think of in the offing. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Singh. I think you raised the issue about the governance at a different level and how to respond to any, and I think I was very happy that you raised about the climate change. This is one of the major challenge which we have. So thank you very much. Uh, now we can open a discussion. We can have some comments or uh, any questions to any specific speaker. Yeah. Okay, I think, yeah, 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 okay, because we don't have much time, so I would request the speakers to answer very precisely. Uh, you would like to give us? Uh, as far as this uh, figure of uh, 23,000 deaths, so if, it, if the earthquake happens to occur in the night, I think uh, uh, that has to be verified or uh, uh, I think that is not a verified figure or it's not uh, there in the, maybe in the similar disaster management uh, uh, that uh, analysis, but not with the state. And uh, naturally the policy changes uh, uh, which uh, should take place, that is uh, the mainstreaming. That is very important that at the policy level or at the uh, project level or at the DPR level, if the uh, Requisite changes or the, in the DPRs they are made and uh, disaster risk reduction is mainstreamed in the projects itself. Only then it can uh, reduce the impact of the disasters. Thank 
Uh, as far as that, uh, you have referred to the stampede which took uh, place on uh, 3rd of July in uh, uh, 2008. I, have, uh, I had also got an opportunity to write some paper on this and uh, uh, Divisional Commissioner at that time, uh, uh, Mandi, who also is for Bilaspur district, he, he conducted the inquiry and he gave some suggestions and uh, he uh, particularly emphasized upon that we should follow that Vaishno Devi temple, uh, 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 that management of the uh, crowd or the mob, which uh, or uh, congregations which take place at the time of Navaratras. That has been uh, followed, and now the uh, 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 number of things have gone. There is a circular road around uh, the. Uh, uh, there is a separate in, uh, in influx and the outgo uh, for the, uh, the for the uh, pilgrims. And a uh, number of things they have c come into place now. And uh, the uh, even uh, uh, the, 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 the during those days when there are the Navratras, maybe in the July, August, or maybe in the winter, uh, then it is the deputy commissioner who is a commissioner of that temple. Also, he takes a lot of steps and uh, duty magistrates and uh, like that. And the, the people they uh, go, go to visit in groups and uh, their biometric this thing that has been introduced. So number of things have taken place between 2008 uh, and no incident, such type of incident anywhere in Himachal as well as the human stampede is concerned has taken place since 2008. Okay. Can, can I, I any chair, other states? Uh, chair, can I just? Yeah, just one minute, uh, we will. Uh, yeah, yeah, so. Uh, first, I would like any states as any questions. Uh, from, yeah, please. Just say the question, then we will. Uh, Ravi, just one minute. I think there is a question from Tripura. What we'll do, we'll quickly get the question, then I, each of you can answer. Yeah. Tripura. Hello. So my question is to Mr. D.D. Sharma from Himachal Pradesh. Uh, in his presentation, actually, he has stated that uh, after having this rapid visual scanning, most of the buildings have become or have been started uh, marked as vulnerable. Now, I would like to have the uh, answer from you that what would be your next action plan? When you, you are uh, finding and uh, you are getting a report that most of the buildings are vulnerable. Okay. Jammu and Kashmir? Yeah. yeah I just wanted to know. What is the uh, resource, how much money is required for this kind of analysis, how much time is it required? And second thing is this kind of information. Uh, it sh I mentioned it was just shared three years back, all that stuff not being shared openly. Uh, what are the security systems for making such information public in the public domain? Or is, uh, yeah. Kamal Vachan Mishra, Chief General Manager, Visa State Disaster Management Authority. I would like to know from Dr. Dr. Sharma, what is the methodology and the parameters used in assessment of social vulnerability in the uh, HRV analysis? Number two, uh, query is, uh, what is the difference in the budgetary pattern after the assessment is done by Governor of Madhya Pradesh? Okay. Of course, my next question will be to Mr. Singh. Policy 
Here, please. Sir, I am Pankaj Jasper from Geological Survey of India. Sir, uh, in all HRBA program, we are dealing with the surface risk, surface infrastructure. But many smart cities are coming. Are we looking into the underground risk infrastructure in the underground by using some 3D modeling of the surface, subsurface? Because nowhere I am seeing this type of study being conducted, particularly for smart cities is required. Second thing, sir, was regarding risk. In all the maps, I'm seeing risk as a taluk level color. But risk is related to the distribution of the elements. So giving a color for the entire taluk, will that information is correct in regard to the distribution of the elements? And third, very quick thing is, in all this HRBA assessment word is being used. But what I'm feeling from the maps and other things is more like an analysis part only. Because assessment is very tedious and very tricky. Whether the risk is tolerable or acceptable is the assessment. Are we really in a position to do that? Or is this, these maps are really in regards to assessment? Thank you very much. Okay, last question from here, yeah. Thank you very much. Now we'll request uh, speakers to quickly answer. Uh, each speaker can take about a couple of minutes so that we can finish in time. Uh, first, I would like to answer that uh, uh, the, uh, the buildings which uh, have come, uh, that they are uh, uh, prone to these, uh, you can say, the they are not safe or they are vulnerable. Like uh, there are two types of buildings, actually the residential and non-residential uh, buildings. And uh, uh, residential buildings, they m must be due to because there was no enforcement, uh, strict enforcement of the uh, building bylaws and other things. You know the democratic setup and all. And as far as the critical infrastructure is concerned, uh, the guidelines have been issued because all the centrally sponsored schemes uh, will have the funding of 25%. Uh, now as a flexi funds and similarly all the dprs which are for future buildings uh, there uh, we can uh, at the dpr stage we can provide the uh, disaster risk reduction measures structural non structural and as far as the existing critical infrastructure like igmc or other big hospitals and schools or even the dc office or other maybe the mayor's office and other offices which are very important with the uh, um, uh, the people visit uh, regularly. There's the retrofitting and that too prioritizing. We are prioritizing, we, can, we cannot give it in one go because of financial constraints, we cannot give it in, but we will priori we are prioritizing the retrofitting of those buildings. Some schools, about 100 schools they have been identified where there is some problem or certain hospitals they have been identified. But we cannot give budget in one go. Uh, th that, uh, being th th that is being prioritized in our uh, uh, budget. And, uh, as I, uh, there are certain, uh, for future, there are certain embedded uh, uh, this budget which is there uh, only in the uh, projects itself and uh, guidelines they have been issued by the NDMA also and by Government of India, Ministry of Home Affairs and uh, at the state level also. The second uh, question was uh, the, uh, whether lightning has been included because this was just a first step and uh, uh, we have we are just moving forward and uh, the more more uh, these uh, uh, disasters like earthquake or other thi uh, these no, whether you have they have included included, lightning, but not lightning has okay, not been that's included. fine that's fine lightning mm -hmm. has not been included and 20 uh, although 25 to 30 people they die of mm -hmm. lightning in himachal pradesh every year uh, th that is yeah. a big loss but that has not been included yeah. okay Ravi? many questions 
the first thing is, like I said when I opened is, the interesting thing about a multi-hazard risk analysis is that you understand that 80% of your risk is located in a very small proportion of the places. That's very important for policy and implementation. Um, so the critical thing is if you take a top-down approach, you want to do the largest risk first and go all the way down. Some risks, of course, are very difficult to deal with because they're distributed.